e kia na tōku pāpa, ko tāna pūkōrero, move your feet. That perhaps sums up the philosophy that I was born into. The explanation for that is, um, Dad was a great tennis player, and table tennis player, and he taught us on the court. His was a doing philosophy. I never would have thought of it at the time. He was just my dad, and that's how we did things. But his key thing was, if you're going to do a sport, do it well, look good. And when it came to tennis, his thing was, move your feet. <laughs> and I guess if I thought about philosophy, Philosophy's got to be something practical that you live with and that gets you through the day. You may not see it as philosophy, perhaps at the time, but it gets you through the day. And to me, that's where I see philosophy as a, an engaging way to live and breathe each day and have thoughts which take you beyond the moment. And if I have a philosophy, it would be one where the underdog is is a key part of that, where you look to uh, to give voice to things which sometimes aren't voiced. So in terms of the academic study philosophy, it was a natural for me at some stage to get there and to find out what is this thing called philosophy. One guy talked about a door is a liminal place. I thought, I like that word liminal, I like words, it's a liminal place. And he says, a door is neither here nor there. It's not this part of this room, not part of that room. It's a, but you have to go through it to get to the other room. And I actually thought, by the time I got to university, I was nearly in my 60s. And I thought, I know a lot about that place. I know a lot about doors. I spent a lot of, most of my life indoors. In, in that space, which he called the liminal space. I knew philosophy gives you big words like liminal, I knew how to spell it, there it was. But actually, that came from another area which they called sociology, and I realised things have, were parcelled up into bits of uh, descriptions of uh, ways of thinking and ways of um, classifying things. But philosophy gave me a way, a bigger perspective into which to put things and it allowed me to lean back, and that's how I sort of put it. And as a Maori, leaning back is an important part. It's not just having a Mark II to lean back in and wind down the window because it's hot. It's actually leaning back in your thoughts and actually getting a bigger perspective of the road ahead. And in the Maori world, the road ahead is actually behind you, which you never see. The Maori view of philosophy, uh, philosophic way of looking at life is that the, um, our ancestors are always before us, so that's why the past is always before us and we are looking at it, and the future sneaks up from behind your back and comes past you, and when you can see it out of your side vision, this is the present, and it comes around, you wait till it comes out, and you impose the present on the past, which is in your vision, because you are thinking of, of um, uh, traditions, things like my dad, Dad, move your feet. My dad whistling in the street saying hello to people. So when things happen to me in the present, I superimpose that on those things I got from Dad and think, well, like, where does it stack up with this non-fearless way of actually approaching people? There are no strangers. But in terms of a philosophy, you need to have something where you actually um, feel that you're, you matter but not that you matter too much. A, you, need a, you need a balance in there. So I think for myself, the balance has always been trying to figure out where I mattered. And thinking about a philosophy which allows you to matter, but you realize there's other philosophies out there too. And that's the truly great thing I think about philosophy, which I want to incorporate into a New Zealand way of looking at how we live in this country, how we incorporate what I grew up with, Māori and Pākehā, into a way which actually opens this country up to sort of say, well, what is the real life in this country? Where is the real identity in this country? We've, I'm really getting tired of this Māori identity word, but if, if an identity comes back to, you know, what is your being, what do you get up for in the morning, and what, you, what could, if people sort of said, if you were to die now, what's the thing, thing you, you found most important in your life? That's the thing to me is what you could substitute for identity. If it's fast food, okay, that's been your identity. Like me, it could be for golf and music, okay? You've put yourself into those sorts of things. It's not your total identity, 
But when you do things for uh, no particular gain, that to me is something. When you do it just for the sheer enjoyment of it, you're not going to be measured, you don't have to produce something which is going to be admired, or you're not worried about rejection. Those are the things to me of a true philosophy of being. And that to me is something which is probably worth, encapsulates probably what I try and live, work and play. Uh, on the golf course sometimes when you miss that shot and the ball goes into the rough and you think, why did it go there? And my philosophy source is because I hit it there. It's an easy, short sort of conversation we have. And then you have to let it go. In golf, you can't do anything about that ball on the rough. You, you, you suck it in and your next ball is three off the tee. 